Welcome to the Harper Classroom. I'm Dr. Harper. This lecture video contains only introductory material. More detailed information will be contained in my project management course and other instructional videos in the Harper Classroom. This video is Project Management Introduction to PMBOK 2, Project Time, Cost, Quality, Risk, and Procurement Management. This video is based on material from a guide to the Project Management Body of Knowledge, PMBOK Guide, 5th edition, published in 2013 by the Project Management Institute. It contains 10 project management knowledge areas which I've divided up into PMBOK 1 and PMBOK 2. And PMBOK 1 is the qualitative aspects of project management, and PMBOK 2 is a technical approach to project management. This video will cover these five knowledge areas and the quantitative approach to project management. If you recall in a previous video, the interrelationship between knowledge areas, process groups, and management processes are given in this table, where the knowledge areas covered in this video are highlighted. You'll also recall that in project management, all this information is not used in every project, only what is appropriate for the project, project manager, and project team. In this video, I will identify only a portion of each of these knowledge areas that I consider important for a course in project management relative to a student and a working professional. Let's start with project time management. Project time management involves defining and controlling the time aspects of the project. There are seven major processes. This video will cover processes two through seven. Let's look at define activities. Define activities determines all the activities of a project. The work breakdown structure is decomposed into its different elements to identify the activity list for management. Next is sequence the activities. Often the activities in the activity list have relationships that some activities have to be done before others or some have to be done after others. Once that's determined, you have a project network. Two primary forms of a project network is the arrow diagramming method, or activity on arrow, where activities are on the arrows and the nodes indicate the predecessor relationships. The next is the precedent diagramming method, or activity on node, where the nodes are the activities and the arrows indicate the precedent relationships. Next, we estimate activity resource. There are three hierarchical breakdown structures for the project planning. First, the work breakdown structure. This defines the work activities, and that's the product view. Resource breakdown structure defines the resources, that's the functional view. And then the OBS, the organizational breakdown structure, coordinates the work and resources with the organizational structure. And that's referred to as the organizational view. The next major process is estimate activity durations, obtain the amount of work needed for each activity. So from the activity list, we go through an estimation process to determine the actual time or the duration for each activity. The next major process is develop schedule, determine the time parameters of each activity. From the project network and the activity duration list, the analysis could include a Gantt chart, which represents the schedule in graphical form, the CPM, critical path method, which represents the schedule and produces a critical path, and PERT, program evaluation and review technique, which represents the schedule, produces a critical path, and generates probabilities. And all these result in a project schedule. The next process is controlled schedule, manage the progress and changes in the project schedule. From the project schedule, we have a change control system, which includes tools and techniques of monitoring, crashing, which is reducing the time, fast-tracking, which is modifying the activities and resource allocation. Now let's look at project cost management. Project cost management involves defining and controlling the cost to ensure the project is completed within the approved budget. There are four major processes. We'll look at the last three. In estimating your cost, we will look at the types, methods, accuracy, time, and approach of determining costs. And these will generate primary cost and secondary cost like contingency funds. Determine budget. From the work breakdown structure, we have our cost estimates, and that will generate cost baseline, which is taking the estimates, applying them over time. A baseline is the same as a budget. The next process is control cost. So from the cost baseline, we have performance reports and evaluation and action. And that includes the earned value analysis, where we can determine the condition of a project at a point in time and estimate the condition of a project at a future point in time. Next is project quality management. Project quality management ensures the project meets and exceeds stakeholder needs and expectations. There are three major processes. But first, we look at project quality and compare the differences between quality management and project quality management. 
And then we look at the three stages of a quality control program, quality planning, quality assurance to assure the plan is done correctly, and quality control, where we have change management. And all three of these constitute a quality program. The keys to project quality management is always include team members, measurement and accountability and communication, and focus on stakeholder satisfaction. The first process, plan quality management. Define quality, standards, and approaches. And there's where we take our project deliverables or standards and stakeholder requirements and create a quality management plan. Next, perform quality assurance. Implement the quality management plan. So from the plan, the assurance would include auditing and assuring quality results. Quality control. Monitor project results and improve project performance. Here we have measurement analysis and quality improvement. And in QA and QC, Quality Assurance, Quality Control, the measurement and topics and tools where we'll look at a number of tools and techniques applied to project quality. The next knowledge area is project risk management. Project risk management is concerned with identifying, analyzing, and responding to project risk. There are six major processes. We first start with risk and utility and defining the difference. Risk, which is the probability and outcome, or likelihood or probability or outcome or consequence, these two together determine a risk. So you can have real risk, but you can also have perceived risks. You can also have utility of the risk, and that is an attitude toward the risk. We'll look at three types of risk attitudes or three utilities. Risk neutral, risk averse, where they don't like the risk, and risk prone, where they will see value in the risk. And this utility can be applied to individuals, and groups within a project or stakeholders. The first process is planned risk management. And here's where we have our risk management plan, a risk breakdown structure where we identify risk categories, identify our approach, and the components of risk. Next, identify risk. We create the risk register of risk events. We identify the risks, and also we describe them. Risk analysis. We can perform qualitative risk analysis or quantitative risk analysis. The qualitative risk analysis can include risk ranking, and the tools would be matrix, risk factor, top 10 tracking watch list. And the quantitative risk analysis is risk evaluation. And here's where we have stochastic utility analysis, decision analysis techniques, PERT and CPM analysis, where we have the probabilities within PERT and the critical path method or simulation. In planned risk responses, we consider risks with positive and negative consequences. And the risk will be different depending on the consequences. We also include additional risks like secondary risks and additional plans like contingency plans. Control risks conduct risk audits and reviews to make sure that the risk plan that's in place is effective. This process also analyzes triggers, which are events, and trends which are sequence of events or patterns, which is environmental. Next is project procurement management. Project procurement management is concerned with the identification and acquisition of goods and services from outside sources. There are four major processes. First, we discuss procurement in different terms, outsourcing, subcontracting, purchasing, buying, third-party sourcing. The first process is planned procurement management. The procurement management plan could contain a make-buy analysis, consider different kind of contracts, which would contain statement of work, a request for proposal, the mechanics on how to solicit the work to be done. Conduct procurements, distribute and collect seller documentation. And this could include the deadline, the format, criteria, conference versus mail procedures, open versus blind and negotiate terms, select sellers, and prepare contracts. In selecting the sellers, we will look at the criteria, the measures, the scales, and different procedures of evaluating and selecting vendors to award a contract. Close procurements, a formal closeout where we verify and communicate completed obligations and post evaluations, identify the scope and quality of the results. And finally, lessons learned. This lecture video 
has been an introductory overview of the quantitative PMBOK2 of these five knowledge areas. Another video, which is also an introductory overview of the qualitative PMBOK1 of these five knowledge areas, completes the 10 project management knowledge areas. Then we can go into more depth. With this ends the lecture video on project management introduction to PMBOK2, project time, cost, quality, risk, procurement, management. I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.